Dr. Blum. Chairman Kennedy, Senator Enzi, and members of the committee, the public entrusts the Food and Drug Administration to evaluate the safety and efficacy do you, of Do you have your uh, button on there? Just bring your mic over just a tad. Thank you. I think we're going to be okay. The public entrusts the Food and Drug Administration to evaluate the safety and efficacy of medications. Having served on an FDA advisory panel, I have sympathy for the overextended staff at this beleaguered agency. But placing the nation's most lethal consumer products, cigarettes, under the control of FDA would be unwise. And asking a Food and Drug Bureau to promulgate product safety standards for cigarettes is an oxymoron that will perpetuate the myth long fostered by the tobacco industry that this inherently harmful product can be made safer. The promotion of this bill by Philip Morris USA, maker of Marlboro, and by far the biggest of big tobacco, with 50% of the market, should prompt skepticism about the measure and its purported public health benefits. Although the bill will strictly regulate new and potentially less hazardous, non-combustible tobacco products, it would not apply these standards to the most harmful form of tobacco, namely Marlboro and other cigarettes, which cause the deaths of nearly half a million Americans a year. And although the bill bans candy flavorings, and no doubt will get rid of the term lights and will have new, bigger, and improved warning labels, it does not require the FDA to eliminate menthol, the mint-flavored anesthetic agent added to the brands most heavily targeted to African-American and Latino-American consumers. Nor is there a mandate for the FDA to eliminate toxic gases, including cyanide or the more than 40 known cancer causers in cigarette smoke, such as benzene, nitrosamines, and radioactive polonium. The bill will most assuredly cause confusion about the difference between reduced exposure and reduced harm. If consumers are told that one, two, or even 22 cancer causers in tobacco smoke have been reduced, they are going to assume that a problem has been taken care of. They are going to believe that cigarettes are safer, and they are going to continue to smoke. This is, of course, deja vu all over again. For more than 70 years, every report on the dangers of cigarette smoking was disputed by the tobacco industry, who claimed more research was needed and who promised to identify and remove any component of smoke that was found to cause disease. This led to marketing gimmicks to allay public anxiety about smoking, such as filters that promised double-barreled health protection and claimed to be just what the doctor ordered, or in at least one instance, was made of asbestos. In spite of the fact that the cigarette filter does not confer any reduced health risk whatsoever, more than 95% of persons who smoke buy filtered brands in the false belief that they are safer. Yet this bill will not ban the filter, the biggest and longest running scam of big tobacco. Similarly, when the Federal Trade Commission mandated that tar and nicotine levels be printed on cigarette advertisements, tobacco companies were only too happy to oblige. Carlton is lowest. It's official confirmed by the U.S. government, now is lowest. To this day, hardly a day goes by when a patient doesn't proudly tell me, but Doc, I smoke Marlboro Lights because it's got only one milligram of tar. I try to tell these young ladies that they're being duped, but they don't want to believe it. Few consumers have caught on that such numbers mean nothing. History has shown that the tobacco industry has circumvented every attempt to impose federal regulations on cigarette marketing. The goal of the Cigarette uh, Advertising and Labeling Act of 1970 was to remove cigarette ads from the broadcast media, but no sooner had the commercials ended than televised sporting events began, such as NASCAR Winston Cup racing and the Virginia Slims women's tennis circuit, providing even greater cigarette brand name exposure than ever. We still see Marlboro logos on TV auto racing worldwide. Research has documented that the kinds of marketing restrictions imposed by this bill are not effective in reducing youth exposure to cigarette advertising. The proposed FDA bill will simply change who is committing consumer fraud. Currently, it's still the tobacco companies marketing reduced tar and nicotine cigarettes in a way that deceives consumers into believing that these products are safer. If the FDA bill is enacted, then the government will be doing the dirty work for the tobacco companies. Small wonder why Philip Morris embraces this bill, which will permit it to tell consumers that it's complying with strict product safety standards, making government-approved cigarettes. In summary, there is no evidence that this bill will save any lives at all. It goes from A to Z without telling us how B to Y are going to work. 
To the contrary, the bill will perpetuate great harm through its grandfathering of high-risk cigarette products, its hindering of the introduction of reduced-risk, non-combustible tobacco products, and its eliminating litigation for consumer fraud. However well-intended, the bill is misguided. It could well be renamed the Marlboro Protection Act. It should carry its own Surgeon General's warning. This legislation is deceptive, and it will prove devastating to public health. Uh, Lisa James.